In today's video, we're just gonna do a little check-in with Surging Sparks. We're gonna take a look at another card that in PSA 10 price is going absolutely wild. And then we're gonna talk about a play kind of towards the end of the video that I think is really sneaky and a lot of people are kind of overlooking, kind of an undervalued product. Now, first up we have Surging Sparks. This is just the booster box. This is usually for main sets, kind of the metric that we gauge everything by, at least I do for the most part. And these have, once they hit like $200, it's kind of fluctuated up and down for a while now. And that's not to be surprised when boxes run up, a lot of people will continue to take profits. You know, a lot of people were able to buy at a hundred or less than a hundred, you know, $90 per box and they're wanting to double their money. Nothing wrong with that. But what we usually see is those people who, you know, they're not going to hold the product for as long. They will continue to, you know, keep the market down for a while. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. We've seen it with a lot of products. So just expect this to stagnate at around this price for a while. I mean, we have sellers here at 180, 189, 195, so it won't take too long to eat it up, eat up those sales, but if people keep listing them, you know, once a set stagnates, it's kind of like the rush to the bottom, but I, I'm not too worried about it. It's just a little hiccup in the road for surging sparks. Before we go any further, I do want to talk about the sponsor of today's video. This is Shiny, and if you guys are not familiar with Shiny, this is an app for your phone, Android, iPhone, that will track your collection. They're new to the market. They've been only out for about three months now, but as you can see, they have really good reviews, and you can pull up any card, any set, sealed, singles. You can pull anything up, add it to your collection. It's gonna track it in the price, so you guys can know how much your collection's worth. They pull their prices from eBay, price charting, TCG player, and then combine all of that data. So that way you can have the most up-to-date prices for all of your collection. Sealed or singles, they don't just do Pokemon, they do other TCGs as well, but obviously this is kind of a Pokemon channel. So if you wanna keep track of your Pokemon collection, go check out Shiny, link will be in the description. Next up, this is like a super underrated card. I just wanted to, uh, to talk about this just for a second. So this card, came out at release, it was like 25 bucks, it went down to 18, and then it's slowly climbed since then. And I had a, somebody in the comment section, you know, was mentioning, hey, you should pick up the Durant's really cheap, pick up three for your binder. And I was like, you know what? I think I will, I think I will. And they were like, I think I got it, it was like 20 bucks, like right at, right around here. And just, it's not the biggest gains, it doesn't mean anything really. But you guys have to remember that this card is one out of 960 packs to pull any specific SIR from the set. So it is very hard to pull. Uh, it, it Sometimes it's wild when we have uh, an alt art from a set or a special illustration rare that's so cheap. And so yeah, just picked up a few copies from my binder, thought it was cool. They haven't all come in. I think I have one here, uh, but yeah. So one copy came in and yeah, I'm gonna put three in my binder cause it's a connected art card. So I just wanted to give that, uh, I can't remember who commented that, but give them their, some credit and just give the card credit just for a little bit. So. Sometimes it's nice to get those lesser cards. We'll take a little update on the Pikachu, the special illustration rare, the Buttholio, as some people are calling it. It ran up, it was 300 pre-release, ran all the way up to almost 600, pretty much 600. And it's slowly kind of been tapering off. They have market at 440, last sold was 425. There's a 410, 420, 420. So we'll see where the Pikachu, like long-term, where can this card, like how, where can it hold? Right, that's gonna be a key point. Now I think staying above 400, that's gonna be, that's gonna be crucial, even above 300, very crucial. If it drops back to this pre-release price, a $300 card is nothing to sneeze at. We'll see, I mean, it's kind of supply and demand right now. There's 77 copies, this is a lot of copies currently listed. For a while it was not that many. And we see the most sales were here at 387, so those people are still up. It's it's just supply and demand. When people are ripping these packs, even though it's hard to pull with so many people ripping, copies are gonna make it to the market. So it doesn't mean that this card can't go on another run later. I mean, we've seen that with countless cards at this point, but it just makes sense that ton of supply is introduced. The card's gonna cool off for a while. We'll see where it ends up. I'll keep you guys updated, but it is interesting to see it setting higher lows though. So, you know, who knows where Pikachu can go. Honestly, it's the market is in com in control of this card currently. Next up, the Latias. So this one, this one surprised me a little bit because pre-release prices right here, you know, 220 came down to 
180, which, you know, below 200, shot back up to 200, went back down, shot back up again, and now it's holding 200. So it hasn't hasn't moved as much as the Pikachu. Very popular Pokemon, right? Legendary, connected art card again. Knew it was going to be popular, but I didn't, I wasn't sure it was going to have this strength to hold this well. Because while, while this dip was, you know, pretty big, and then a lot of people bought, like right here, there's only 30 copies of this card on TCG Player. So either people are holding on to this one a little bit harder, or... You know, it should be the same pull rates, one, at, one out of 960 to pull. I don't think it's a pull rate issue. I just think people are holding on to this card a little bit. It goes with the Latios. They pair nicely. So what surprised me is just how well it's it's held in this channel. I know it's a $40 swing from 220 to 180 but it just it's up and down, like, very consistently at 200 Last solds, we're all seeing 206, 218, 207, 203, 205, 200, 216. So it's up there. And so that's what I like to see this... This seems like it's pretty decent strength on this card, so that, that's what's been surprising me. Obviously, you know, the Pikachu's got the big the dollar sign attached to it, so a lot of people are going to sell that because of its its value. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just, let me know what you guys think about the Latios, about this chart right here. Just interesting to me, and obviously there's less sales over here because the price is a little bit up, but, yeah. It's, it's nice to see. Just, you know, different stuff, different charts, different cards. Then we have the Pikachu. So we talked about this as the gold. It's actually harder to pull than the special illustration rare if you're not familiar. Not by a lot, but it's like, I think it's over a thousand packs. The other ones are nine, one out of 960-ish, <clears throat> according to TCG player. So this card ran up after release. Went from 40 to, you know, like 100, 123. It's come back down to 98. Now it's back up to 100. There's 58 copies on TCG player. Last sold 102, 110, 101, 102. And if you aren't familiar, in the past, gold, like this era specifically, SV era, the gold cards haven't been valued at all, like really. They're, and they're hard to pull. So it's nice to see a gold card. I've talked about this before, so I won't go too deep into it, but it's just nice to see uh, this chart. We'll see where it ends up, if it continues to run or if it levels off, comes down, because sometimes they come up, they cool off, and then they go on another run. So we'll see. It'd be nice to see a gold card, you know, continue to rise in value. Okay, now let's talk about the Magikarp from Paldea Evolved. I saw this. I was a little. I saw this a little late um, on these prices, but we know that this is a hard card to grade. If this is an illustration rare from Paldea Evolved, so quality control was really bad on this set. There's not a lot of ten, like gradable ten copies out there. But what has surprised me is this price. Now I remember for a while this was six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars in a ten when it like first started like popping off 600, it was mostly 600, but now we're seeing sales at 11, we'll call this 1100. Okay. These are Japanese copies. So you have to ignore this. I don't, they're, they're, they're squeaking in here, but 88, $80 for that. This is where I, it got interesting for me. This is what I saw. It's caught my eye. 1500 for a magic carpet and 1250. So hard to grade, but the fact that we're hitting this point, I mean, with the strength of the market, it shouldn't be surprising, but just when you go from, in my mind, I hadn't checked like PSA 10 Magikarps in a while, so I go, it's it's like a 600-ish dollar card, and then it's like doubled, over doubled on some of these sales. So obviously this one's a little lower. We'll see, we'll have to look moving forward if they stay more around this price or if they continue to uh, get into these upper prices, but very interesting there. Um, the pop report here, I'll just pull it up for you guys, just so you guys can see. We have 6,700 copies graded. There's only 1,500 tens, 3,700 nines, 1,200 eights. So you can see that that's, that's very hard to grade. And that's what happens with quality control. We talked about, I talked about this before, if Paldea Evolved gets a large reprint and we see the quality control be better, that's gonna do a lot to this card. But we haven't seen that, so. Just something to keep, and I don't, you know, we don't know what sets are going to get reprints at this point. You know, I thought we would have heard more about more reprints, but maybe they're just the demand is too much and they're printing, they, they can't really keep up, they're having to print all the new sets, because it does seem like the releases are coming like bam, 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 pretty quick sometimes it feels like. But uh, we'll just take a look at the, the raw card just for a second, because it is on a quite a bit of a run. Just in the last three months, it's up 40%, and it went from 105 all the way up to 160 
Last sold are 163, 150, 162, 177. I hate these other listings in here. Uh, it's, anyways. Um, yeah, last month, continuing to run 28%. Look at the one-year chart. The one-year chart, I like to take a look at. One-year charts, I feel like, are valuable. You just kind of get, like, a wider, you know, view of the card. And it's nice to know that, like, oh, back here it was... See, I remember it was... I remember it was 50, 60, 80 bucks. And, yeah, that's... 60, 80, ran up, yeah, ran up to 90, cracked 100, ran up to 150, cooled off, and so now it's at a one-year high, the Magikarp. Uh, you know I love this artist, did the Giratina, so popular card, I, I get it. Sometimes it's interesting when the illustration rares are surpassing, surpassing the SIRs. Part of why that is, if you're not familiar with this set, there's a lot of illustration rares in Paldea. So this card, the specific card, when there's more of a specific card, makes it harder to pull. So this card actually is is a little hard to pull. The QC issues, you know, it makes it what it is. Okay, next up, we have a, a product we're going to talk about. Just hear me out. <laughs> Let me explain myself. So in, in the Discord, I had some people talking about Shrouded Fable. They were talking about the, the Pokemon Center ETB. They were talking about the promo. And, you know, got me thinking just a little. This set, kind of regarded as, you know, pretty meh, pretty pretty bad. However, Pokemon Center ETBs, the ones with the stamped promos of this era, have traditionally done really well, okay? And so I just wanted to bring this up. So this this is the TCG chart. Obviously, it's just coming down, right? They're at 70 bucks. These are available currently on the Pokemon Center, okay? And I'm just going to bring this up. This is the stamped promo. Look at what the stamped promo has done. This is up 72% in the past three months. Just because a set is bad doesn't mean that a product can do good. And people, this is the reality of what's going on right now. People are crazy over this stamped promo. Okay. Even in PSA 10, if you get, if you, if you want to take the gamble and you want to get some PC ETBs and open them, try and grade Petrarin, I don't know. So this is like, I get it. This is not a popular Pokemon, not a popular set. However, I just, I think that there's, there's something to be had here. And I know that sounds controversial, but don't sleep on the stamp promos, okay? Once these sell out on Pokemon Center, people are going to be like, what, what, wait, what? That's gone? People, you know, eventually it's going to happen, okay? I don't know when, okay? I'm not saying it's going to happen like today or tomorrow, but just just keep it just keep an eye on it like we look here came out the gate at 14 11 dollars that's pretty good growth um i did not pull up the psa 10s for this card but um, you can make money on it i i think i think they were on like 150 in a psa 10 so m there is money to be made if you want to risk if you have a gradable copy um or if you want to keep them sealed you know they are available here these are the Pokemon Center ETBs that are currently available. Uh, you can't go wrong. I, if I was leaning, obviously I'm going to lean Stellar Crown because I do think that the Noctowl promo is better. But once these are gone, if these are still here, Shroud of Fable is going to be available. And I just think I think it's a little bit of a play. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Might be controversial. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree. Uh, it's just of a weaker set, this is the product you want to have. So um, that is... That's my Shrouded Fable take. I'm not saying to divert like 90% of your assets into it or anything like that. I'm just meaning like, hey, maybe pick up a few. That's all, right? It might, might do you well. You never know. Lastly, in this video, we have some full arts or secret rares as on the Japanese side. This is from Terastal Festival, which is our English Prismatic Evolutions. Now these cards, I saved them for last. They're nothing crazy. These are just trainer cards. But we'll just take a look at them because I try and reveal all the new cards when they come out. You got this guy. I don't know who he is. Sorry. Uh, trainer cards for me. I, I don't honestly. I could care less collecting about trainer cards. I don't. I don't invest in trainer cards either. Just not a fan. Um, yeah. So if you like these cards, good on you. Here they are. But they just this guy's hair. Uh, they just don't do anything for me. I don't have any faith in them. I just don't like them. Now. There is a caveat to that. When a trainer is paired with a Pokemon, I do like that because I like the Pokemon, but we're not getting that here. So yeah, and you got this little guy, he's chilling. He's got his little, 
I don't know if this is like a school uniform. This is <laughs> this is when you know you're too deep. When you're starting to analyze and I'm like, what is this? Is this a school uniform? <laughs> I've lost it. I'm too far in. Uh, then we got just some regular... Oh, are these the English versions? Yeah, okay. Actually, I should probably check the article just to make sure. Okay, the regular versions of these cards were released in previous sets. Okay, so we're getting... These are the versions that we're getting in summary. So I should probably read the article before I pull it up. So yes, in summary, uh, just a little market update for you. You know, Surging Sparks, I feel like... I feel like with a few products in the market surging like 151 things have like kind of stalled out which is kind of to be expected nothing wrong with it it's just kind of the hype not that the hype's died out but we're just it goes up and we're just at a lull like right like the charizard from 151 uh it's it was up then it came down a little now it's uh, it's kind of like eh, leveling off a little uh 151 product like i think the PC ETBs and UPCs are kind of stagnant as well. I think they've hit their ceiling for now. And I feel like we're all just like holding our breath, waiting for prismatic evolutions to drop. And uh, I mean, I think things will pick up with uh, the Japanese version, Tarassel Festival, because that does come out in December. So that'll be interesting to see. That might start the hype train rolling again. So I feel like we're in a little bit of a lull until then. And then that will carry December into Christmas. And then before you know it, we'll be on the heels of Prismatic Evolution. So that's just my feel of the market right now. But um, yeah, that is going to do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.